morning, everyone. Welcome to worship on this August 23rd, the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be you, kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. A reading from the book of Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to prevent your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now recite a psalm 138 responsibly found on page three in your bullet. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name. Because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name. And your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increase my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord. When they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing the ways of the Lord. The greatest is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hands against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Please 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Like most folks, I'll never forget the day I turned 16. You know, I'd taken all the necessary driver's ed classes. I had logged enough hours behind the wheel of my car, with, or my parents' car, with a learner's permit. I even stood in line forever at the DMV on the weekend in order to get my driver's license. I was ready to drive that car that I actually helped purchase some weeks ago. It was a gray 1983 Pontiac Sunbird with a moonroof. Oh, you couldn't touch me in that car. I was hot stuff. And I woke up early for school on that first day that I could legally drive my car all by myself. And of course, I was ready to grab the keys and just head out the door and have that first taste of freedom on the open road. But of course, my mom and dad were there with, their, with my keys in their hand, waiting for me to give me that lecture. And of course, I got that standard lecture that most new drivers get about being safe, paying attention on the road, obeying the speed limit, all that good stuff. But of course, being the excited teenager that I was, it was in one ear and out the other. I was ready to go. I was ready to be on the road. But there was one last rule my parents had for me before they would hand over the keys. No friends in the car for a month. Prove to us that you can handle the responsibility of driving first, and then we'll talk about it. And I remember putting up a little bit of a fight, but not too much. I just wanted to get in the car and go. So finally they handed over the keys, and I was in the car and headed off to school. And of course, as soon as I got there, one of my friends talked me into going off campus to get some breakfast before school started. So we got in my car, and I had just started pulling away from the curb when it happened. I was pulling out, and as I was pulling out, I bumped the car as it was pulling up to a stoplight. And immediately, I felt my stomach start to drop. Now, I didn't do a whole lot of damage. Honestly, I didn't. I put the slightest of dents in the bumper of the other car. There was a little rubber where, you know, back in 83 in the Pontiacs, it was, the uh, bumper seemed to be made out of rubber, so I rubbed a little bit of that. Honestly, I think you could have buffed it out right then and there. But the other driver pulled over, and I did as well. And we exchanged information, and he saw my license, and he said some words that made my heart stop beating. He took a look. Oh, are you Vicki Haley's son? Oh, God, what have I done? And of course, I muttered a weak yes. Oh, I work with her at the hospital. Don't worry, we'll get this taken care of. Oh, Lord. You know, even though he said it, and he was a really nice guy, I knew I was in trouble. So I headed back to school right then and there, breakfast be darned, 
I got to get back. I got to head this off before I get into too much trouble. And I make that phone call that I was dreading. So I call my mom at work, and I fessed up to everything to leaving school, even the fact that I had a friend in the car with me. And to her credit, she handled the situation really well. She even asked me if I was okay first. And then she said she'd figure out things with her coworker, and then we'll talk to your father when you got home. And that's when I knew I was in trouble because she never referred to my dad as your father unless I was in a lot of trouble. And then I got home after school, and again, to my parents' credit, there wasn't a whole lot of yelling. It wasn't any of them. But I did hear the worst thing that a kid can hear from his parents. In fact, I would have preferred to have been yelled at rather than hear this. We're disappointed in you. Oh, we're disappointed in you. You've proven that you're not responsible enough to handle driving right now, so you can't drive for at least another month. And this time I was smart enough not to argue with them. And sometime later, when we were reliving the story, my mom admitted that she had been nervous handing me the keys to a car, wondering if I had you know, the maturity to handle that, that huge responsibility. Not only was I taking my life in my hand, but others all around me. Was I mature enough to handle that? And I think we can wonder this morning about Jesus giving the keys of the kingdom of heaven to Peter, in today's story, you know, if we take a look at Peter's track record, both before and then even after this event, we wouldn't be wrong to wonder if, if he too had the maturity he needed to handle that awesome responsibility. For the past two weeks, we've been reading about some of Peter, Simon Peter's quote-unquote failures. You know, he's walking on water, and then he takes his eyes off Christ and he starts to sink. You know, last week, we heard about how he can't quite grasp why Jesus is so upset with the Pharisees and their strict interpretation of the purity laws. And he, he needs Jesus again to explain himself. Peter doesn't quite get it. A few verses after today's gospel reading, Jesus calls Peter Satan, or the enemy, for setting his mind on, on human matters instead of divine things. And then there's that whole matter later on in the story of of Peter denying Jesus three times. So again, does Simon Peter have the maturity to handle the keys to the kingdom of heaven? You know, how does Jesus even give the keys to someone who seems so unstable, unsure of himself, one who doesn't always get it all the time? And clearly, Peter's authority is not based on his merit nor on his righteousness, so what is it based on? At the very beginning of, of the gospel reading for this morning, Jesus asked his disciples the million-dollar question, right? Who do people say the Son of Man is? And the response on the disciples' part seems to depend on what particular faction they are a part of, whether they are attracted to the message of John the Baptist, or Elijah, or Jeremiah, or maybe one of those other prophets. And Jesus responds by asking them an even more pointed question. Okay, okay, I hear that, but who do you say that I am? And lo and behold, Simon Peter finally gets one right. You are the Messiah, Jesus. You're the son of the living God. And Jesus confirms Peter's confession by blessing him and then declaring that this was something that Peter couldn't possibly have figured out all by himself. I know you, Peter. You didn't come up with that answer all on your own, did you? We know for a fact that Peter doesn't always get things right the first time around, so this assertion of Jesus' identity could have only been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, Petros in Greek. And on this rock, Petra, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. It's a little word play there. Peter, Petros, rock, Petra. Now Peter 
not only gets a new name, but he gets a pretty serious promotion there, it sounds like. But I think it's important to take notice that Jesus isn't responding to Peter's particular strengths or his accomplishments, which, quite frankly, left a lot to be desired, but rather his testimony of who Jesus is. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. You are very God of very God. You are God on earth in human flesh. You're not just a representative of God, but you are God with us. God in our midst. You are Emmanuel, God present with us in the flesh of Jesus Christ. That's Peter's confession. But the church is not founded on Peter. Just as it isn't founded on John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, Martin Luther, John Calvin, even for us Episcopalians, King Henry VIII. Church isn't founded on those folks. The rock is not Peter, but rather Peter's words of who Christ is. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. That revelation of who Jesus is, that's the rock upon which the church is built. That's what grants us the keys to the kingdom. And God relates to the church not as a coercive ruler, but instead as a loving parent who entrusts a fragile, fallen, sometimes immature child who's not always ready for those keys to the power to do right and wrong, the power to be faithful, and the power to drift away. Now, of course, Peter, being a Jewish man in his time, he had expectations of what that Messiah would look like. And it may have been very different from what Jesus was doing. But the Holy Spirit and Peter's lived experience with Christ, his relationship with Christ, moved him to see Jesus as the Messiah. But first he had to let go of some of those expectations. And I think in the same way, if we are to live out the gospel, to live out the good news today, we may have to let go of some of our expectations of what the church should look like right now. You know, what does the church need to do right now to share God's love, to bring hope to those who have very little? You know, we can't wait till things get back to normal. We can't wait to be the church until after COVID is gone. So what might we have to let go of in order to be the church in the year 2020? Because whether we like it or not, the church is changing. But I also think that's an opportunity for us to shape the church. Because we have to meet the world where it is, not where we want it to be. In his letter to the Romans, Paul calls on us as believers to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. By using the metaphor of the body in this way, Paul is forcing us to go beyond emotional or intellectual assent to God's will in order to consider that those implications, there might be some new things we have to do with our bodies to live out as disciples of God. And we might need to do some things that might cause others to question. Things like standing up for the less fortunate, feeding the hungry, wearing a mask, loving our neighbor, speaking out against injustices in the world. And Paul tells us that each member of the body has different functions. You know, the hand and the foot don't do the same thing. But each one of those has value. And each part is intimately connected to one another. He uses that beautiful metaphor to remind us that we're not mere individuals. It's not all about us, folks. As much as we might want it to be, sometimes as much as we're told it should be all about us, it's not. It's all about being a member of the body of Christ. And as we sit here in this church this morning, both 
physically for us who have gathered and for those who are watching on our live stream and who might watch later on video, we need to remember that we're each one of us connected to one another intimately. We worship together. We may not be in the same space, but we worship together. We care about the health and the welfare of one another. We pray for one another. And we have to see each other as beloved children of God. You know, we may not always look ready to hold those keys to the kingdom. But the good news is that the church isn't built on us. Rather, we're living stones being laid upon that sure foundation that is Christ and Christ alone. So may Christ continue to build his church through our imperfect lives in this imperfect time. And may we be the church. And may we bring about the works of God on earth as the body of Christ. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. He saved, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please kneel as you are able for the prayers of the people. Let us lift our voices in prayer, joining with the faithful throughout the world who offer their intercessions this day, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. Give your grace to those who care for children in foster homes, sustain them with patience, and encourage them to provide a family of love and respect. Let us pray. Lord, hear, us. hear our prayer. Open our eyes to behold your hand in the work of creation, that we may marvel at your intricate craftsmanship and tend the beauty that we behold. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Pour your knowledge into the minds of those who are re returning to school in the next few weeks, and for those attending for the first time. Still their hearts by your loving presence. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant us the grace to honor the many gifts that you have given, not coveting what our neighbor has received, but grateful for what you have entrusted to our care. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Reveal yourself to every nation and people, that we may know you to be the Christ, the Messiah, the one who saves our souls from the pit of darkness 
and who comes carrying the lamp of charity that leads us to the divine life, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Give life to those in the tomb, opening the gates of heaven to all who desire eternal life, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us continue our prayers to God, who cares for the lowly and guards us in the midst of trouble. For parish members who are ill, infirm, or in need, including Frederick Gray, Judy Shackleton, Wayne Lockard, and the Lockard family, Bill and Carolyn, David Kerr Park, Evelyn Ellis, Leo Landry, Rob, Ben, Eleanor, Samuel, Matthew, Phil Hoagie, Joan Langenfeld, Eloise Hendrickson, Pete Coakley, Mary and Scott Vining, Loretta March, Leonard Tabor, May, Alexandra, Jenny, Rick Davis, Ann Brown, Kelly Weaver, Kelsey, Boyd, Mel Sappington, Pat Cooper, Fran Sullivan, Mark, Allen, Jordan, Noah, and those we name with our lips or in our hearts. For those who have been deployed and put in harm's way to defend our country. For all those who work for the safety of our communities and the security of our country. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember those in the Fellowship of the Faith, Church of St. Christopher's, Linthicum Heights, St. John's Church, Ellicott City, and St. Mark's Church, Highland Town. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for our companion diocese of Puerto Rico and for the Church of the Province of Southeast Asia. Jesus, you are our way, our truth, and our life. Guide us in our journey through the coming week, that we may know God's desire for each of us and gain strength and courage to live as beloved children of God. As the gift of each new day unfolds, open our hearts and minds to you, that we may see you clearly and follow where you lead. To you, risen Savior, we offer praise, now and always. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Share with one another a sign of Christ's peace, socially distanced, and Christ's peace be with all of you who are watching on our live stream. Please be seated for just a few brief announcements. Just a couple today. We have our second outdoor service this evening at 6.30. There are still just a few spaces available if you'd like to join us tonight and get a second round of church. Uh, I've been really thrilled at how quickly that service has been filling up. Um, so please join us. Bring your masks and your, your outdoor chairs so you can stay in your car. We had somebody donate a portable PA system to us, so a big thank you for that as well. But join us for that. Uh, please make sure you sign up. Um, the Bible study that we had scheduled uh, has been pushed back till September. Um, if you are interested in that, please give me an email and I'll make sure that you have the Zoom link so you can, can join us for that. Um, and I am going on vacation next week. I'll be in the office Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So we will have our Wednesday morning Eucharist if you care to join us for that. Uh, again, sign up. Um, but I will be on vacation for the next two weeks. So next Sunday, we'll still have church, uh, still sign up uh, to come to church, uh, 8.30 in the morning. And Jim Dietrich will be leading morning prayer for the next two Sundays uh, while I'm away. So please join him. Um, our senior warden will be working the camera system. So um, be easy on her. It is a little difficult to learn right off the bat, but uh, she will be working the camera for Jim as he leads worship. So please join us for that. And please keep in mind, we have a lot of kids who are getting ready to go back to school, some who are still trying to figure out what college looks like in the fall as well. So please keep all of them in mind. We have quite a few teachers in our congregation as well. So just keep them in mind as they go through the uncertainty that we're all going through. But 
even more so with, with families and, and children and schooling. So please keep them in your prayers. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Please stand as you are able. Our liturgy continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, which is found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer, if you're following along in the Book of Common Prayer, or it can also be found on page 8 in your bulletin, or on the bulletin uh, that is on the link in the description if you're watching on our live stream. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, peace. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We'll start with this side first, we'll go up this aisle, and then we'll go over to the other side. The 
prayer of spiritual communion for those who can't be with us in person this morning. In union, O oh Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And let us say our post-communion prayer together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. May God's blessing be with you, Christ's peace be with you, the Spirit's outpouring be with you now and always. Amen. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Lord, I thought I'd dismiss you first. Let us go forth in the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks.